Hi guys, James at Rampant Line Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head over the sea once again to Denmark and revisit Mikeller. So this is a beer from 2012 and it's called the Bidot Wild Winter Ale. It's supposed to be a sour beer, so it should be quite an interesting tasting video to do for you today. So as is usual with my beer reviews then, I'll take you through a very brief history of Mikeller. It will only be a minute or two because I've done a number of these reviews for you before. If you do want to get straight to the tasting, just fine fast forward, the brewery website's in the description for you below along with a link to my other reviews that I've done from McKellar before and I will also tell you about the, a little bit about the interesting artwork that's on this beer. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about McKellar, these guys of course are the famous Danish gypsy brewery who were founded by Christian Keller and Mikkel Bjergso, although they are now run exclusively by Mikkel Bjergso who actually used to be a teacher and he said that he used to stop on his way home every day after school for a beer and he began, began to come um, very frustrated with the lack of quality of beers that were available in Copenhagen during this time. So he started to brew himself. But again, this brewery are very influenced by the American craft beer movement and they basically started out as the home brewing experimentation of Christian and Mikkel and it grew from there. They took one of their beers to a blind tasting and it actually won the, the title of best beer in the tasting. But since they're a gypsy brewery, they actually don't own their own brewing facility but rather they brew at a variety of host institutions and these are in the USA, Norway, Scotland and also in Belgium. Most of their beer is actually brewed at the, the De Prof Brauerei in Locriste Heifte which is near Ghent in Belgium but their home base as such is the McKellar Bar in Copenhagen and they also have a collaboration bar called McKellar and Friends with Toul and these, the founders of Toul of course are former students of McKell's but again they're a hugely experimental brewery and they've brewed apparently well over, I, th I think it's a thousand beers or something they're getting close to now but they produce about 80 different beers a year and what's interesting about this particular one is that it's a label designer that I've not actually seen them use before so this is a, a new one as I told you this beer was actually um, released as part of a series of four in 2012 and this was basically to introduce Bidot into the regular label producers for McKellar so this one was the winter beer as you might guess by the name but Bidot is a Swedish graphic design firm that's owned by Per Nicholas Bidot and it's one of the fairly recent additions to the McKellar regular label producers if you like so it looks a really cool beer but what's interesting about these labels is the fact that they're all made on thermally sensitive paper or th with therm thermally sensitive ink I should say and what happens with this beer as it heats up is the um the leaves on the tree actually disappear and since I took it out the fridge they're gradually getting a little bit kind of lighter so it's quite it's a really cool kind of innovative idea and I believe the summer beer actually had flowers and they would just be black dots but then the flower would appear as the beer got cooler so it's pretty cool but this one apparently has Britannomyces in it and this is a common bacterial additive to sour beers that gives them that really kind of tart and uh, really quite sharp citrusy flavour so it should be a very interesting beer for us to review so just to tell you about it, it's a 6% wild sour beer and as I told you these are usually made by adding bacteria to the brew in this case it's Britannomyces and this as I say was brewed as one of a series of four in 2012 so without further ado let's get this guy open and we'll get on with the tasting here Oh. That's never good, and that's the risk you take when you do beer reviews. This one's obviously been fermenting away a little bit too long, but that's always the risk you have when you do beer reviews on YouTube. So, sod's law. But yeah, very sour, even just on that little taste. But yeah, as you can see, we've got it out of the bottle, even though it was with a little bit of an explosion. A plain bottle cap, as always with McKellar. But yeah, I'll just bring up the camera and check that you're seeing this guy properly. I need to go and wash my hands after this one. But anyway, there you are. As you can see, it's poured a nice kind of um, slightly reddish orange amber colour actually. As you can see, there was a huge head on this, but it's quite a bumpy one. So that's going to gradually just fade away. If I put my fingers behind it, you can see it's not transparent at all. It is a completely hazy beer. There's a little bit of sediment visible in the bottom of this and just a little bit of carbonation sticking to the side of the glass some big bubbles actually so it looks it looks quite an interesting one and the little taste of the head I got when it just popped over the side of the glass was very sour so definitely a sour beer but yeah there's more sediment in it now just with pouring out the last little bit of the beer but it looks very nice so let's have a look at the aroma of this guy so as you would expect from a sour beer it does have all the typical elements of that You've got a particularly, you've actually got quite a nice caramel underlying in this one. 
You can definitely pick up the yeasty and bacterial character in this. So there's some big yeasty character in there, a little bit of spice and some caramel sweetness. The spice is almost a little bit kind of cin um, cinnamony if that makes sense. But it's quite a tart and citrusy aroma that's coming out of this one. A sort of lemon sherbet note actually. But there's maybe a bit of grape character to it as well, the sort of white wine grapes if you like, a kind of Venice um, aroma if you like. That's probably the right way to describe it. But there's some red fruits in there too I want to say. Maybe a bit of kind of sharp plums or something like that. But yeah, there's a nice kind of caramel sweetness just underlying. So it's quite interesting. It's not as sharp as some of the sour beers I've come across before. I don't review many sour beers because it's not a style that I'm all that fond of, if, I, if I'm honest with you. But this one smells alright. It's got a nice kind of caramel malt base, like I say. Then you've got the typical kind of Venice um, lemon sherbet -y citrus notes on top of that. A little bit of red fruit, like I say. But there's a yeasty character in there and a bit of spice too, so it smells quite nice. But without further ado, this is the Beto Wild Winter Ale from the Keller in Copenhagen at Denmark. And this one is incidentally brewed at Locriste Heifte in Belgium. Slandje. Actually, once you let your mouth adjust to it, it's not quite as sharp as some of the other sour beers I've come across. So as you would expect with the beer, you've got a big sharp sour and kind of tart fruit aroma in there. It's a sort of lemony citrus in there. There is a kind of grapey, sort of white wine grapey character in there, sort of Venice flavours if you like. And these are kind of sticking towards the front of the tongue. That lemony sherbet juicy character is right at the front, but it's quite dry around the edges of the tongue, as you always get these sour beers. I want to say it's a kind of grassy, slightly aromatic -y hop that's going around the beer in this. But it really is the sharpness. It's a very tart beer as you would expect when of course it is a sour beer. But yeah, it's got all the elements of the, aro of the aroma in there. You've got a big kind of yeasty malt base and that does blank at the middle of the tongue a little bit and there is a, just a teeny teeny bit of cinnamon in there I want to say that the malt base is just a little bit spiced but there's a bit of a woody flavour also coming out of this one so it's, it's quite interesting actually a little bit of caramel in there too just going down the middle of the tongue so it's a nice kind of contrast this it's almost a little bit like a kind of um, sour IPA in that sense to me. It's, it's this is a they described it as a wild winter ale. So a style I've seen that's related to this is an American wild ale, which must be just their kind of take on some of the Belgian sour beers. But American uh, beer lovers, if you like, I always tend to notice they like a big sweet caramel malt base in there and that's definitely present here so you can see the sort of American wild ale characteristic which you would expect from the American kind of northwestish and west coast uh, brewers actually. But yeah, a big kind of sharp sour and tart fruit in there. It gets less sharp as your mouth adjusts to it. It's almost like lemon sherbet. That comes in just behind the kind of front curve of the tongue, around the edges of the tongue there you've got quite a sharp, grassy, slightly floral and maybe even a little bit aromatic -y hop and it leaves the mouth quite dry at the front. As you go towards the back it becomes a little less pronounced, maybe there's even a little tiny bit of earthy character in the back there but in the middle of the palate you've got a kind of yeasty blanket in there, a little bit of um, cereal and maybe cinnamon spice in there but there's a bit of a woody flavour to it as well and perhaps a little bit of caramel sweetness so in that regard the kind of caramel sweetness that's in there does make a more of an, uh, an American wild ale if you like so it's, it's, it's quite an interesting beer this as I say sour beers aren't my 
uh, 40 if you like. They're not my favourite style of beer, but this one is actually quite nice, so maybe I'll need to go and try, uh, seek out a few more American Wild Ales and see how I get on with those and review them for you on here, of course. But in terms of the mouthfeel with this one, I would say it's kind of light to mid-bodied. It's got quite a lively carbonation, actually. That helps promote the dry character and the kind of sharp, tarty citrus that you get in the very front of the palate. But as you would expect, it's got a big sour character. There's a good bit of hop dryness, particularly around the edges of the tongue, and particularly at the front. And of course, there is just a little bit of malty sweetness in the middle of the palate too. So yeah, it's, it's quite an interesting beer. If you are into your sour beers, I can see why folk would like this one. Not sure you're going to find this one again, because like I say, it was released back in 2012. So it's almost, it's about two and a half years old just now when I'm filming this, uh, this beer review. So this beer you might not find again. But regardless, I hope you've enjoyed the beer review. Please let me know in the comments section below if you have tried this beer yourself. I always like hearing other people's thoughts on the beers that I'm reviewing for you. There will be many more McKellar reviews to come, but in the meantime, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Again, I hope you've enjoyed this beer review, and I will catch you soon with my next one, and there's many more to come from McKellar. Slanja.